Today we're going to take this 2003 Ford Taurus and transform it from this to this. This is going to be a start to finish video on the full process and we're going to try and do it on a budget. We're 100 bucks into it, that's what we paid for the car and it was so cheap because the rear end here, the whole back suspension is blown out as you can tell, just kind of sitting on the tire there. But it's got some rust here and there. Rear brakes, I they're not locked up but they're not good. Front brakes are alright. But it starts right up, runs and drives, it's got 210,000 miles, so perfect candidate for demolition derby. I think we're going to start here with the exterior. We have to get all the plastic removed, so front bumper, rear bumper, headlights, taillights, and then we'll move our way to the interior. That's a good start for now here up front. We're gonna have to move the wiring and put it all up there so nothing gets pinched, but let's go ahead and close this. Let's take a look, looking pretty good. All right, let's move on to the back and then we'll start stripping the interior. Okay, I think we're about done for the back. We're gonna move to the interior now, probably take out some seats. The back is looking pretty good here. Main reason why I wanted to do this, now we've got access to these three nuts, which is the top of our strut there. Got two new ones, they were 90 bucks a piece. And uh, yeah, we just can't do anything else about that. So, sucks putting brand new parts on a car that's gonna get destroyed, but you gotta do what you gotta do.
So the nuts on the top of this sway bar link here are super rusty and we're not really gonna need that for demo derby. So I'm just gonna go ahead and chop it off. Yeah, that needed replaced. And fast forward a couple of days, we got the rear end done. The shock on the other side, I went ahead and did that. And while we're in there, we found out the rear brakes are just completely done. Uh, lines were leaking. Shoes were just completely ground down, so I'm just going to delete the rear brakes. These are the lines that go back there. I just cut them, smashed them flat, so these are acting like plugs. And then these just run the front brakes. We got them bled. They're working great, so we're just going to run front brakes for this build. And then the next thing we're going to do here is this whole wiring harness. We're going to unplug everything, and we're going to run it through here. This, you can tell, this is a pinch point. You know, if you get hit with one hit here and clip these wires, you're going to be down for the count. So, through the firewall there, right above it, right in here, we're going to cut a hole. Basically, we're going to take all this wiring and run it up through there and then just plug in what we have to just to make this thing run. So, let's, uh, let's start doing that and see what we can do. Looking pretty good so far. It's got a couple more wires to go right in here and we can fish it on through. And we had to fast forward a bit. Demo Derby is in a week and I've got too much to do so I'm not going to film everything. I'll just show you guys the bits and pieces along the way. So as you've seen I was taking the wiring harness and we got it disconnected. We shoved it through here and then our access hole you can see I cut. I just did cut there, there, and there, and then hit it up with a hammer and just bent it out of the way. Got our fuse box here, and then the wires come down, and like the ABS module, we didn't have to plug that in. I got rid of the cruise control module, just little things here and there that we just didn't have to plug in. And then I extended the power so we can run the battery in the cab, and yeah, that's about it. And as you can see, the big pile I've got gone. Went ahead and gutted the interior, got the door panels out, roof uh, headliner out, just the seat here. So yeah, it's looking looking like a derby car. We've got negative right here, ground to the frame, and then the positive goes through that little access port there through the firewall. And yeah, I just put the battery in. That was the last step, so I didn't even try firing this thing. Let's go ahead and do that. Make sure I got all my wiring right. All right, come on, baby. All right, we got power. Heck yeah. Sweet. Yeah, this thing sounds great. We are getting close, so I think the next step is probably busting out the windows. And then we'll have to weld a bar back here. Part of the rules, we have to put a plate here, same on that side, and we have to weld a bar straight across just in case our uh, seat hinges break. It's one of the safety requirements, so uh, let's uh, probably smash some glass now.
All right, we got all around the vehicle shot vac cleaned up, got all the top surfaces, and then I went ahead and taped over the remaining glass. Now, time for the inside. And it's the next morning here. Last night we finished getting all the glass out. And this morning I started with the fan here. I got one mounted back. We're not gonna mount that one because if it gets smashed in, it's gonna melt the plastic and probably cause a fire. So we're just gonna run one fan and got it wired in. Since I moved the harness, I had to extend the plug. And then the next step here, we're gonna weld our bar that goes across. I made a little template here. This is gonna be, we're gonna use this to cut out a piece of metal. We're gonna weld it here and over there, and then we'll be able to weld our bar onto that. Got this piece of scrap iron, another scrap here. We're gonna cut that out, and then cut that to length, weld it all in place. Welding's done, and I went ahead and hit it with some black spray paint so it doesn't get any surface rust, but it turned out pretty good. I'm not the greatest welder, and we were using a flux core welder, but it got the job done. But now we have to install this battery box so we can have this completely enclosed, and then an on-off switch for a fuel pump, which we're going to use this here. This is called an inertia switch. When you get in an accident, a button pops out and shuts off your fuel. So we're just gonna cut these wires, put them to a toggle switch, and that'll be easy enough. But that was located way back there. We just kinda brought the harness up, put the ground here. Yeah, should be pretty simple. toggle switch mounted right here. I'll write fuel on off and it'll be right next to the driver's seat. Okay, it looks pretty good. Now let's figure out which is the on position and which is off. Well, that sounds pretty good, so I'm assuming that's on. Yeah, yeah, that's doing some weird stuff. Back to running good. All right, so that's on, that's off. All right, that turned out great. Now we have to remove the airbags and then mount a fire extinguisher. All right, I think the best place I could find to mount this fire extinguisher is gonna be somewhere in here. It's still accessible from the driver. Let's pull it right out. Should work good. Perfect. All right, now that our battery's been disconnected for at least five minutes, we can go ahead and start messing with the airbags. This one, I think there's two eight millimeter screws and it should pop out. All right, passenger side done. Now time for that one. Well, 
gets it unplugged, but according to the rules, it says they need to be removed still. So I'm going to take the steering wheel off, see if we can pop it out of the back so we don't have to cut up our nice steering wheel. One driver side airbag. Now that we kept those both intact, probably sell them, make a little money. All right, that's done. We were able to remove this trim piece from the airbag. So we can go ahead and put our dash back together here. There we go. Now we need to make this thing sound like a race car. So. I'm going to start it up, let you guys hear it before, and I'm going to cut this exhaust off, and then we'll listen to it after. nice little touch not sure if it benefits from anything but looks pretty cool this thing is just about done only thing left is painting the numbers on the door and the roof and then some other finishing touches here and there but it's supposed to rain the next couple of days so I'm gonna pull this thing in the shop and get it painted Derby car is officially done. Paint turned out great. I am very happy with it. And to give you guys a little insight, made a little list here on what everything cost. Grand total, $492.38. So under $500. We're going to be able to smash this thing, have a good time. So if you see a Taurus that's broken, you can usually get them for pretty cheap. And uh, the few things I wanted to show you guys that I did not film. I moved the coil pack, zip tied it to this hose right here. It just sat up really high and you know, you get hit, the hood crunching, slice those wires, it'll kill the engine. So that's just in a little better location there. Another thing I did is back here in the trunk, I was watching some YouTube videos, came across uh, Demolition Missions. He has a lot of really good tips for building these demo cars. And this was one of them, notching the frame like this. Essentially, what that'll do is when you get hit, it'll roll your trunk upwards instead of having it go down like these like to do, pin the back tires and drag it in the dirt. So we'll see what happens there, see if that actually works. But Demo Derby is tomorrow. So I appreciate you guys for watching. And uh, yeah, next video will be smashing this thing.